this video I'll show you how you can remove, fix or replace birthmark scars or any skin imperfections. I will be working on a shot from my latest film Shark Bait. You can check out the making of this film on my website at tomantusfilms.com. The actress in my film had just given birth a few weeks before we started filming and she had a pregnancy line visible on her stomach. In our film, however, her character hasn't yet gotten married or had kids, so I have to remove this line. So here inside DaVinci Resolve I have our shot and I'm going to basically remove uh, these uh, stretch marks here from uh, our actress's stomach. Now since the whole shot is actually much longer and I don't need to do it on the whole shot because her stomach is only visible through like the second half of the shot, then uh, I'm just going to go and basically make a cut here and then from this point on uh, basically work on the shot. So now I can select this and uh, I'm just going to click Fusion tab to go into Fusion. So whenever you go into Fusion with the new shot, this is basically what you're going to start off with. So it's going to show you your uh, two nodes basically media in and then media out whatever you put in between is whatever you know or however you're going to modify the, your media and then whatever you're going to output here is what goes back to the edit page or the color page or whatever other page in DaVinci Resolve. Um, I'm also going to switch here to our two window view uh, on the media in and I'll press uh, one on the keyboard and that's to basically make this uh, be basically displayed in the viewer one. Now, as you'll notice, this shot has been shot in S log two, so it's very flat looking, doesn't have a lot of contrast, so just so it's easier to work with it. I'm gonna go here in both of my windows and I'm gonna just apply like a temporary LUT. And here I'll do the same thing, I'll apply the same LUT. And there we have it. And right away, the shot is just you know easier to look at. Uh, okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is um, well, the, really the order doesn't matter because that's sort of the advantage of working with nodes. So I could do different things, but maybe one thing I'll do is I'll just track uh, like here the belly button in her uh, in the, of our actress, so that I have something to basically connect things after as we you know we basically paint out uh, the little marks. So to do that, I'm just going to go here and make sure you deselect both of these nodes, press shift space, and I'm going to select uh, or look for the tracker. And I'm going to use the, there's different trackers you can get. Um, I'll show you here. They have planar camera tracker, surface tracker, and I'm going to use this one, the, 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 which is basically a point tracker. This point tracker, now uh, if I press 1 on the keyboard, so I can display it in the first window, you'll notice that there's nothing in there. That's because there's nothing connected into the input of this node. So I'll take our media end node, and from the output I'll split it so that it's uh, going into our tracker. So now it, the video shows up in here. And uh, I'll go somewhere here, like in the middle. And I'm going to basically just, you know, take our tracker and just move it here. So it's kind of positioned at the belly button. Somewhere there. Can make it a bit smaller. And this is basically your search area. Since in this shot, the, the movement is very slow, I don't have to make that really big. So I can even make it smaller. Uh, and that's it. So I'm going to start tracking. I'm going to, to track it basically forward from this position, I click this button here. It says track forward from current frame. If you do this one, it will jump to the beginning and then this tracker basically will be in the wrong spot. So I'll just press this and just kind of watch it go. Now, one thing you'll notice though, is that uh, as it gets to the end here, it's gonna basically like the, the, you know, her belly button goes out of frame. And so that means that we will not be able to uh, basically continue tracking. So as you can see, the tracker basically just went all crazy here. So I'm going to undo this. Uh, for the pad center now, here in the settings, I'm going to choose track center append. And I'm going to track this again. Once it gets there, I'm going to just click stop and click yes. Because then now from this point on, I'm going to basically have to track something different because once the belly button basically leaves the shot, I won't be able to track it anymore. So 
I'm going to pick uh, which point. I can even go here. Right here where the bikini is. It's like a nice triangle, so it should track that point, no problem. But you'll notice that even though I moved the tracker window, the actual center position still stays in the same place. And that's because we changed the path center to track center append. And I'll continue tracking here. And there it did it. I'm going to just zoom out and you'll notice that our tracker actually goes all the way towards the end of the shot. Uh, all the way until basically her, her uh, belly, uh, her stomach is no longer visible. So now I'm going to go back to this frame uh, in the middle that we started and I'm just going to track backward. And we'll just wait for it to go. And again, before it exits the frame, I'm going to stop it because there's no point in, uh, in tracking it from that point on. Now, if you did leave it and it basically went out of frame, like for example, if I leave it here on purpose and you'll notice there it stops tracking, it's still okay. Just stop it at whatever point. And then all you have to do is you just basically go here somewhere right before it basically stops, starts messing up. So somewhere here. And now I'm going to move this. And maybe I'll, for example, maybe start tracking from this frame on, maybe here, the corner of her bikini. And I'm just going to go here and again, uh, track back from this point. And going to track all the way to the beginning of our endpoint of our shot. And there we have it. So now we can just kind of scroll just to double check, make sure everything's looking good. But uh, as you notice, uh, our tracker now follows the, the, the center of her, her stomach there. Now we can actually start painting out the things that we don't want to have in the shot. So. Uh, I'll go back again here to the same kind of frame here in the middle and I'll uh, click here the paint tool. Now this note, I'll press one on the keyboard so I can see it in the viewport uh, here on the left, but I can't see anything right now because there's no information or no data coming in there. So I'm going to take the media in one and take the output of that and connect it to our paint uh, node. So now you're seeing that shot up here. And with the paint node, it's kind of like painting in, uh, in any sort of uh, photo imaging software. So you have different brushes. I'm going to choose the stroke here tool and uh, I'm going to choose the clone tool. I'm just going to zoom in here so I can see better what I'm doing. And with the clone tool, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just like in Photoshop, press and hold the Alt key and then let go of it. And you can basically sample this area where the X is and you can paint it over here. And I'm just going to quickly make a little adjustments like this. Here, the same thing. Here, maybe to smooth it out, I'm going to make a bigger brush. So press and hold Control to make it bigger. And just like that. And now I'm going to zoom out. And this is how it looks. So our shot here uh, is uh, on the left, basically has the paint node applied. And this one doesn't have it. Now, the only issue now is if I were to just scroll through the shot, you'll notice that our uh, if, if basically the cloning tool keeps on sampling the same area, but our subject in the shot is moving. So if, because of that, you want to go back and uh, there's different ways you can do it. We can actually select all these strokes. So for example, we get to the selection tool here. We can select the different strokes that we did. We could group them and actually then link them to our tracker that we have here. But the issue with that is because it goes out of frame, it would keep on sampling stuff out of frame and then you know, basically you'll get weird artifacts towards the edges. So in this case, actually, the better solution is just going to be to freeze this, uh, this shot. So I'm going to uh, apply a node so, uh, that basically does that. So I'll go Shift, Space, and I'm going to look for a Time node. And you can see we have the time speed. I'm going to add this node. And now, basically, I want to put it in between here because I want to freeze that, that frame that we have here. So to put that in between here, you can select your node and then press and hold Shift, and you just drag and drop it here in between it. Now I'm going to go to our inspector here and adjust the time speed node settings. So for the speed, I'll type in 0 to freeze that frame. Now, when I do that, you'll notice it jumps to the first frame of our shot. And that's because there is a delay is set to zero. So we actually want to delay it to 
Uh, the frame is, what is it, 1100. So go to delay, type in 1100. And there, we're back at, on, at this point now. And now if I scroll, you'll notice the shot on the right here, which is our media out, does scroll. But the shot here on the left, where we applied the paint stroke, is frozen. So basically that frame is now essentially uh, uh, frozen through the duration of the whole shot. Um, so now what we can do is we can basically essentially cut this portion of our belly out and now apply it on top of uh, the uh, original video so that it's only being applied to that section. Uh, the different ways you can do it, but the easiest way is just to do here the merge tool. Again, we'll uh, press the shift and kind of place it in between our media in, media out. Uh, I'm going to take here the media out here uh, from the paint node. I'm going to connect it to the green little triangle. That's the foreground element. And um, now, uh, for example, I can also create a mask. So uh, I'm going to create, take the here polygon tool and I'm just going to paint a very simple mask here like that and connect the two. Once you have your polygon created, in order for this to be used as a mask, we're gonna take the output of this and connect it into the blue triangle, which is the mask uh, on the merge node. And uh, now, essentially, it's only being applied to this part of the image. Now, if I scroll, you'll notice there's two issues. First of all, our mask doesn't move uh, with, the, with our subject, but also the edges are very, like, very rough looking, so. If I were to go here into the settings for our polygon, I can adjust the soft, the, the edge. And so I'm just going to bring it up just so it's kind of a more smoother transition. And uh, now the next thing we need to fix is the position here. So one way we can do that is by uh, creating a transfer, uh, transform node. So I just grab it here from this menu. And now I'm going to take the output of the polygon mask and I'm going to basically connect it into the input of our transform. And now the output from the transform, I'm going to connect it into the mask on the merge node. And so again, nothing has really happened up here because we still haven't connected it. So one way to do that now is we can connect the transform uh, by going here to the center, right click on it and go can do different things. You can do, for example, tracker position, but I'm going to actually directly connect it to the track path position. So it's attached now to the belly. Now the issue is the center of this thing was actually to the left, so our polygon essentially moved. So uh, you can do different ways. You can actually just physically move this here, or we could actually add another node, a transform node in between this, and move that. So let's try that, for example. We'll do another transfer node. Now, again, be careful here not to connect this to the mask, but the actual input of this node, and then the output of that connected to the input of the next node down below it. And now with that done, we can now actually move this. So we can, in this transfer node, we can move it here. So it essentially, you know, repositions the shot back to how it was supposed to be. Now I'm actually going to go back to that 1100 frame where we basically did this mask because that's where our, was our position, our neutral position you could see, say. And so now when I do that, I see it's actually the mask isn't back in its original or the proper place. Now if I scroll through the shot, you'll notice that it's moving, right? Now the issue is that the actual shot that we're revealing through this mask is still not moving, right? Our paint node. But we can fix that very quickly, essentially just by you know, duplicating these two transfer nodes. Uh, so I'm going to select both of them, go Control Copy. I'll do here Paste, and I'm going to take now the output of this, connect it to the input of our first transfer node, and then the output of the second transfer node, connect it into the uh, foreground of this. And now you'll notice that our shot, essentially our paint node, is also moving and it's all using the tracker data from the, the tracker that we, we did at the beginning of this. And that's pretty much it. Now, you, for example, one thing I notice is that as it gets to the edge of the shot here, our polygon kind of starts you know, going into here and the 
and the bikini basically line kind of moved. So I'm just going to adjust here. And you can see I'm creating basically keys there. And now as I scroll through it, you'll notice that, you know, our shot uh, well, looks properly, meaning that our paint node that we did is actually moving. It's using the tracker data from the first tracker that we did at the beginning. And then the same thing with our mask that we applied. So it's only being applied to that section of the belly. And, uh, you know, here again, in the left viewport, we can see the original shot. This is the final shot. And as you can see, it's that simple. You can still always go in here because you're working with nodes. You can easily modify any of these. Like, for example, if you weren't happy with the tracker data, you could again go in there, modify it or retrack it and things like that. And the cool thing is that all of these other nodes that are connecting to it would automatically be updated. But now if we go back to our edit page, uh, you'll notice this is our shot now, our corrected shot where basically this scar on her belly is now gone. And I'm just going to play this up here so you guys can see how the shot looks. Uh, definitely a very subtle effect, uh, but also, you know, it's something that back in the day maybe would have been a lot more difficult to do. But now, thanks to all these great tools inside DaVinci Resolve, it's something that can be done relatively fast. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, as always, remember to subscribe. Also, leave me a comment. Let me know what you would like me to show you in the next uh, video. Uh, and if you haven't yet, then go check out my website at tomantosfilms.com where you'll see a ton of other tutorials like this uh, and also where you can subscribe to my newsletter so you always stay in touch. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!